Hello everybody, my name is Jim Kim, and today I'll be talking about the biggest organ of our body, our skin. As you go through this lesson, I want you to touch your own skin. It can be your forearm, your palm, or anywhere in your body, so that you are reminded that everything we're discussing in this lesson is happening right in your own body. The skin is an amazing organ, and in medicine we have dermatologists who specialize in treating skin disorders. So again, it's the biggest and most visible organ in our body. So let us now begin with this virtual male model with his skin intact. In terms of its gross or macro anatomy, it's pretty straightforward. It is the most visible part of your own body after all. So we're going to zoom in like really zoom in and observe what's going on under your skin. So here is a detailed model of your skin. And the most top layer that I'm highlighting is called the epidermis. It has five layers and from most outer to inner layers are stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, in stratum basale. The deep part contains these cells called keratinocytes. I'm sure you've heard of the term keratins before, and that's basically what forms the most outer layer of the epidermis. You see, these keratinocytes migrate up as they mature from the deep part to the superficial part. And when they pass the third layer, stratum granulosum, they go through this process called keratinization, where the cell dies off, but it leaves behind keratin filaments that contribute to its watertight barrier. And in the deep part, there are also melanocytes that produce melanins, and these particles are taken up by keratinocytes and contribute to different tones of skin colors. Under the epidermis is the big white glob of layer called the dermis. It has blood vessels running through, this layer also contains sensory receptors that are responsible for that touch sensation on your forearm. These sensors are referred to as corpuscles and are directly connected to sensory nerves of your skin, which extend all the way from the brain. You can also see these wiggly structures, and they are your sweat ducts and your sweat glands. At the bottom is this eccrine sweat gland that produces the sweat and you can see a network of blood vessels near the sweat glands. Here is another view of your skin, but the layers are the same. We have a great view of the hair follicle here. And let's look at its inner contents. You can see a nice sturdy hair shaft in the dermis layer. It's surrounded by multiple layers of structures. And the outer layer is called the external root sheath which is basically an extension of the epidermis from top to bottom. There's also a nice muscle called erector pili muscle, which is responsible for your hair to stand up when it's cold or when you're impressed, AKA goosebumps. You can also see this bulge where the erector pili muscle meets the external root sheath. And this is called the follicular bulge. And this area contains stem cells for your hair shaft and the bulb of hair follicle, which is the base of this entire structure. So stem cells from the follicular bulge travel down, mingle with melanins and keratins to contribute to making your hair. And finally, you can see this larger bulge in the top, and that is your sebaceous glands. It produces waxy substances that keep your hair oily and protect your skin from drying out. And finally, the last layer of your skin is the hypodermis, which has fat tissues to act as cushion for your skin. So that's all the layers of the skin. And let us now visit the virtual model again. And as you can see, the skin is so prevalent. It's everywhere over your body that is so complex and has a lot of moving parts to keep it healthy. 
I hope this video helped you make sense of what really goes on under your skin. And if you enjoyed the content, please consider to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.